Well, friends. All right. So we are going to hop into John chapter 14. Okay. So John chapter 14. Man, that's going to be a good one. Okay. So bear with me. I'm going to read out of my NKJV today. Okay. I'm going to start right off with the way, the truth, and the life. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, I just want to stop there for a second. Okay, so I feel like so often we skirt past the first piece here. And I, I just, I want to stop and, and really circle back here for a second. <laughs> oh, hiccups are starting early. Okay, so I, I love the very first line here. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So if you believe in God, believe in Jesus, right? Flat out, okay? And then I love this next section here. It says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So right there. If it were not so, I would have told you. That is him telling us like he's honest. He is the truth. He tells us the truth. He is the truth. If it were not so, I would have told you. Right? And then, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So we know that he is, when, when, he, when he ascended, right, he went back, he went back up to, the hev to heaven to be at the, um, <clears throat> at the side of God. And he went, to prepare a place for us so that we, if we come to him, we have a promise and a hope of a place in heaven with, with God, with Jesus, right? So, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. So he's telling us here, he's going to come again to receive us. Where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. And Thomas is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he says, I am the way. So Jesus is the way. He is the way to the Father. So he's saying, you know, he's leaving. He's going to God. He's going to our, our Heavenly Father. And he's preparing a place. And... If you want to get there, you need to come to Christ. It says, no one comes to the Father except through me, except through Christ. Right? So that's like our first point here. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes into that promise and that place that he's that he's making for us in heaven unless you come to Christ and you come into relationship with Christ right so you need to accept Christ in order to fulfill that that you know in order in order for that promise to be fulfilled you know your place in heaven is there for you is being prepared for you when you come to Christ okay Okay, moving on. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. 
Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. <laughs> Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So this right here is like, this this section is one of the pivotal, um, one of the pivotal points in Ooh, seeing warnings. Um, sorry, that was weird. Um, this is one of the pivotal points in like what I, I, there's there's many things that people call it, but I, the main thing that people call it is um, like salvational issues, right? Salvational um, topics. So so there are certain things that in order to receive salvation, we have to believe, right? And we have to live out. We have to have faith and we need to live like we believe it, right? And this is one of those things that, um, as far as, as far as I've always understood it, right? <laughs> um, the Holy Trinity, right? Um, and it starts, like the explanation starts, starts here. Um, let me come back here. If you had known me, you would have known my father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. And then he goes on, he says, He who has seen me has seen the father. And then, Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own authority, but the father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the father and the father in me. Right, so that is a pivotal piece right there. That God God and Jesus, the Son and the Father, are 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 one and the same, right? So God is in Jesus and Jesus is in God. So that is one thing that we are called to believe. And it goes on, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. The greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So it's kind of a it's kind of a roundabout here, but it's kind of, it's reaffirming. He's he's saying again, um, if you ask anything in the name of Christ, God will do it, right? My Father will do it, and then he goes on and he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it because He is God, right? Highlighting, sorry. <laughs> All right, now here we go. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth. <gasps> Whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. <gasps> oh my gosh. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I love this again. Cause it, man, this is one, this is one of the areas where it just like really confirms why it's so important to actually like study scripture because you can read this. And if you're just reading it, just to read it, you're going to skirt past it. And you're going to be like, what the heck is going on here? What are they talking about? And 
it's not going to make a whole lot of sense, but if you really dive in with a heart that is open to trying to understand this, you'll see, you'll see that he is pointing this out. And, and I love too, that, um, throughout scripture, it talks about how God will give us the wisdom that we need when we need it, right? Like he will open our eyes to, to understand what he wants us to understand. And so this is, I feel like this is really one of those areas that when I was, before I really came into relationship with Christ, and even when I was very new in my faith, I didn't really understand what the heck this was talking about. And it was, it was really challenging. Um, but as I have grown in my knowledge and I have grown in my faith, this has started to make more sense. Okay. And it's one of those things that I feel like it's a personal, it's a personal journey to, um, to navigate the complexities of this, of, of this very vital piece. Okay. So, so we need to understand, we need to believe that we can only come to the father through the son. But when we have a relationship with the Son, we have a relationship with the Father because the Father is in the Son and the Son is in the Father. Okay? When we come into relationship with the Father through the Son, okay? So we believe in the Son and we believe in the Father, okay? We then are called to keep His commandments, okay? If we keep his commandments, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. So love the father, love the son, keep the commandments and he will send you a helper, which is the spirit of truth. Now, again, the spirit of truth. Okay, we know it as the Holy Spirit, right? But also remember, he's he's indicating for us again. The spirit of truth. Jesus just said he is the truth. So he is sending his spirit of truth to abide in you. To abide in us. Right? So so he is he is telling us right here that we are receiving his spirit. Okay? Hold on one second. I need to close my shades. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Getting very distracted. Seeing, I it's so hot. I have, have windows and fans and just seeing all kinds of stuff out there. So, <laughs> all right. So, let's read that again. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, so. He's, he's telling us, how can we show that we love him? By keeping his commandments, okay? By being obedient. How do we show that we love Jesus? How do we show that we love God? By keeping his commandments, by being obedient. We show that we love through obedience, okay? So, and, and, and it's not a grudging. Notice that it's, it's if you love me. It's not a grudging. It's not if you want all the promises. It's not if you, you know, if you want this, if you want that. It's, it's if you love me, keep my commandments and I will send you my spirit. 
he wants us to be obedient by choice and and not grudgingly he wants us to to have an open heart of obedience and in that he will send us says another helper that he might that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth so again he said he is the way the truth and the life so he's flat out saying the spirit of truth it's his spirit so again that trinity right the son is in the father the father is in the son and then they he sends his spirit of truth to abide with us okay it says whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you i will not leave you orphans i will come to you i love this but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you so you receive you you um you enter into that relationship with with um jesus and then you enter and then you enter into that relationship with god right so through the son you have a relationship with the father and then you receive his spirit and you already know the spirit because you already know the son you already know the father so you know the spirit because they are three in one okay <clears throat> So, and then it says, a little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. <laughs> At that day, you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Okay, this right here. We're going to stop right here for just a second. Maybe longer than a second. And we're going to discuss this part right here, okay? So this is verse 21. So John 14, verse 21. Okay, this right here is, is one of the biggest, one of the biggest, biggest um verses that i feel gets missed because there's this attitude of well if i accept christ and i just i just go about my life still i just do whatever i want to do still well do i still get the benefits of that relationship and this flat out says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So when we are obedient to him, that is when we are showing our love for him and he is, and he is filling us with the blessings of that, right? And the benefits of that. And it says, again, he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Okay. So this is, this is what I'm saying. You, you need to be obedient to God to receive the blessings of that relationship. You need to be obedient. If you go off and do whatever you want to do, you're going to miss out on a lot of blessings that he wants to offer you. Right. And this, I mean, and this is kind of, this is kind of harsh even. It sounds kind of harsh, but I mean, if you are not, think about it this way. So he is our heavenly father, right? And so our parents in real life, are we supposed to be obedient to our parents in real life? Yes, right? So we need to be obedient to our real life parents and that is how we honor them. We show them that we love them. We show them that we trust them. We show them that we believe what they tell us to do is true, right? 
And when we are obedient to them, that shows them that we love them. And then they get to reciprocate that because we're not in trouble, <laughs> right? But when when we are disobedient, we defy them, we go off, we do our own thing, we throw tantrums, we say, you know, screw you, I want to do my own thing, I don't want to do what you say, that's not loving, right? And it makes it a lot harder to, to you know, the, 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 disobedi- or the, the disobedience brings the, um, the consequences of that. Right. So when we are disobedient to <laughs> we're spoiled brats, basically, <laughs> basically. So, you know, if we are being disobedient to our parents, well, then what what would happen? Like, think back when you were a kid, if you're not still a kid. Um, <laughs> most of us aren't. Um, think back when you were a kid and when you disobeyed your parents, what happened? You got disciplined or grounded, right? My kid is figuring that out. She gets disciplined and grounded, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's absolutely the reality for a lot of people. And, and, you know, discipline, discipline, grounding, losing privileges, you get things taken away from you. Where did that precedent come from? That came from God. That came from God. So we, we are called to be like children to God. We show our, our love for God by obeying him. And then we get to reap the benefits and the rewards of that obedience. Okay. But if we are disobedient, then there's discipline, there's consequences, there's privileges getting lost. There's things getting taken away, right? It's exactly the same concept, just on a much larger scale, right? And we don't always necessarily recognize when it's a discipline or a consequence. We just, you know, man, there's all kinds of things that we think, oh, my life is terrible or, you know, no, you just, you just need to turn your heart back to God and seek him out and seek to, to show him your love for him by being obedient, right? Right. In our obedience to him, we show him our love and we get to receive his love and his blessings for us. But if we are disobedient, we're not showing his love and he has to discipline us to get us back on the right track. Discipline is a tool, is a teaching tool to get children to to learn the right way of doing things. And if we are, if we want to learn how to live better, then we, we will... We, I mean, even if we don't want to learn how to be better, we're going to be disciplined until we get there, right? One way or another, there's going to be consequences when we disobey God, just like there's consequences when we disobey our parents, or at least there should be. Let's let's just be honest. Like, you know, a healthy parent-child relationship has, you know, if there's not obedience from the child, if there's disobedience, then there are consequences for that disobedience. That is a healthy parent-child relationship. And that is a God-honoring parent-child relationship and a God-commanded, right? Um, that is how God's, God sets that precedent for us and and actually commands us in throughout various areas of scripture how to parent our children and children how to how to be obedient and loving children to their parents. Um you know, so, so really think about that as we're talking about obedience, a really awkward, uncomfortable, nobody wants to talk about being obedient. Like that's just, it it feels like a dirty word, right? But it's such an important conversation that needs to happen where if we want the blessings that come from being in in a relationship with the son and the father, then we have to be obedient. And, and again, I'm going to read this, um, John 14, 21. I'm going to read this verse again. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Okay. And then we're going to move on here. <clears throat> Judas not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word 
and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which your heart is not mine, but the father's who sent me. Okay, let's read that again. Break that down. <clears throat> if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. So now he's adding on. He said before, if anybody, if anyone loves me, they will keep my commandments. Now, if anyone loves me, they will keep my commandments and keep my word. Right? So there's our two step right there. First two steps. Keep my commandments and keep my word. And my father will love him. And he, and we will come to him and make our home with him. So now he's he's bringing it together, right? Like he's explained various times that the father and the son are one and the same. And now the spirit is is brought in, right? So now we have the Trinity. And now he's saying we and our. So we will come to him and make our home with him. And again, he, he already said that is through the spirit. So they are saying, he is saying, um, my spirit, the, the, the spirit of the father and the son will come and make, make our home with you, right? So it's just like with early, earthly parents, part of a way a child shows their love to the parents is being obedient to the rules. Exactly. Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And it says, he who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. <clears throat> okay. He who does not love me does not keep my words. So he's flat out saying, if you don't obey me, you don't love me. And then he said just a second ago, um, he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So he's saying, if you are obedient to me, I will be there and I will, I will, you know, I will love you and I will, um, you will reap the benefits of that is basically what he's saying. Okay. So if you don't keep the word of God, if you don't, so with that, that's, you know, if, if you don't study his word and if you don't obey his word, his commandments, his instructions. If you don't heed the guidance from God and the instructions from God and the commandments from God, then you don't love God. If you love God, you will obey him. Point blank. I feel like that's so, like, I feel like that's such a simple point. But that's such a, that's such a, oh, man, it's one of those things that I feel like people, people will, we, I mean, I think we all do it at some point in our lives, at least, is that we fight that point. Well, I love God, but I don't want to obey him. Well, then that's not love. That's you want the benefit, but you don't want to do the work for it, right? And we need to make sure that we're not getting stuck in that. We don't want to get stuck in that mentality of, oh, well, you know, that reward looks awfully bright and shiny, and I want that. But the work that you're telling me to do, mm, I'm not willing to do that. Well, if you're not willing to do the work, then you are not doing it for the right reasons. You're not you're not wanting the reward for the right reasons. You're not wanting the reward because you love God. You're wanting the reward because of selfish reasons. So, if you love God, you will be obedient to him. But if you don't love God, you won't be obedient to him. So that's, that's really a heart check matter. Like if you're, if you're defying God, if you're being disobedient to God, it's, it's a good opportunity for us to take a step back and like recognize, Hey, okay, I completely disregarded what I felt God was telling me to do there or what I know God is telling me to do in my life. I'm completely disregarding it. Why am I disregarding it? And, and truly, like really like bring that to God and, and, and figure out and navigate. Like, why am I, why am I not listening to God in this, in this situation, right? Or in this area of my life. And if you're, if you're disobeying, like if you're blatantly disobeying, then 
again, that's a good opportunity for a heart check. And maybe it's that you didn't know. Maybe it's that you're you're still very new in your faith and you're still figuring it out, right? But once you know what you're supposed to do, you need to have an open heart. We all, we need to have an open heart to obeying that, doing what we're supposed to do and, and living it out, living out the instructions, living out the way that we're called to live, right? Living out you know, our life the best that we can, like Christ. And if we love God, if we truly love God, then we will have a heart of obedience to him. And it's not easy. It's, it, there's, I, I like to say that we're commanded to do these things because it's not our natural inclination to do them. We are commanded to do these things because it's hard. And we need to be told to do these things, these right things. We need to be told to do them, right? So keep that in mind too. Like it's hard. It's hard. But it's always worth it, okay? Okay. Pick up at verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I said to you. So he's saying the, the Holy Spirit will come to us. And as we are keeping God's word, as we are are doing our best to keep his commandments, right? As we are striving to be obedient, the Holy Spirit will be with us to guide us, to remind us. And and we need to remember like I oh my gosh. I always say I have a I have the memory of a peanut. Like I could never remember all this stuff on my own. But but I know that I can rely on the Spirit to remind me of things and convict me of things and correct me on things when I need it, right? Like, I know if I don't remember something, like, of my own accord, I can trust God's Spirit of truth to speak that truth to me when I need it, right? And, and but we need to be in His Word regularly to be absorbing it, right? And we need to be obedient to the Spirit as the Spirit guides us through his word and speak t- speaks to us in it, right? So we have to spend time in the word and feed ourselves, feed our, our mind, our spirit, our soul, whatever you want to call it, right? And, and utilize that Holy Spirit within us obey God's spirit within us. That's God's voice speaking to us, speaking truth to us. And we need to get stronger in in recognizing his spirit talking to us, right? He said, yes, the flesh is so disobedient. Yes, the flesh is disobedient. That's why we're called to not live by the flesh, but live by the spirit, right? I look at the word as a mirror, and when we look into the word, it should be reflected in us. Oh, man, that reminds me of, I wrote something down in the very front of my Bible yesterday. Oh, my gosh. So, I, I'm glad you said that. Man, so yesterday in our, in our sermon at church, um, pastor was telling a story. And it was like, I can't remember exactly what the story was, to be honest. But I remember the, the, the bit that that was quoted um he said the by he there he was part of a missionary trip he was part of a missionary trip in africa i think it was and they were reading the bible for the first time these people they had brought the bible in to um uh, to these people for the very first time. And so they were, they were reading scripture for the very first time. And when he asked them, you know, 
you know, like, how do you like it? Like, how, like, what's your experience with this so far? You know, kind of questions. This lady said, I am not reading the word. The word is reading me. And I was like, oh, that just like hit my heart. I had never thought of it like that. And that was just so powerful to me. And what you said, that absolutely just, man, that's absolutely. I look at the word as a mirror. And when we look into the word, it should be reflected in us. That is absolutely right. If it is in the word, if it is, if there is a way that we are called to live, right? Like there's so many ways that we're called to live throughout scripture and that should be reflected in our life. We should be able to, to go to the word and read and say, oh, okay, like I see, like in this, like we are called to be obedient. If we love God, <laughs> we will have an open, obedient heart to him. Is that reflected in you? Does that is that talking about you or is it not? <laughs> oh my gosh, excuse me. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. <laughs> oh, look at this. We've got a nice good note about the Holy Spirit. Let's dive into that real quick. I feel like the topic of the Holy Spirit has come up a lot in the last week. And I don't think that that's any accident. I think that it's been a really necessary reminder that we, we need, we need God's spirit. We need his spirit in order to help us understand and help us learn and help us grow and and be our guide through life. We need his spirit. And this right here that we're going into is telling us how do you receive his spirit? How do you receive his spirit? So before I read this note again, I'm just going to pinpoint a couple couple of points here, okay? Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth again if you love me keep my commandments and then it says again later if you love me keep my word if you love me keep my commandments and if you love me keep my words and we will send you a helper, the spirit of truth. So if you are obedient to God, and if you are spending time in his word, if you are seeking him out, he will send you his spirit. That is how So you, you accept the son, you believe in the son, you believe in the father, you receive the spirit. Okay. So what is the Holy Spirit? Let's read this note here. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and thus should be referenced as he, not it. He possesses all God's attributes and is fully God. Throughout history, God has acted, revealed, um, has acted, reveal, revealed his will, empowered individuals, and disclosed his personal presence through the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me read that tongue twister again. Sorry. Throughout history, God has acted revealed his will, empowered individuals, and disclosed his personal presence through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has specific functions. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was given to an individual at a specific time to aid in accomplishing a particular assignment or mission. 
reference Numbers 1126. Let's check that out. Numbers 1126. Read that in a second. And um, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Oh gosh, how do you spell that? Ezekiel 2. two. Let's see if I spelled that right. Oh, I did. Okay. Okay, read that was in a second. He was not constantly present in the life of every follower of Yahweh. However, from the coming of the Spirit in the New Testament until the end of the age, the Holy Spirit indwells all believers from the moment they trust completely in the Lord and his saving power. Let's just highlight that right there. I see your note. I'll read that in just a second. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers from the moment they trust completely in the mo in, in the Lord and his saving power. Oh, yes. When an individual accepts Jesus as Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell, never to leave. Okay. So point blank right there. Real simple. And then again it references Ephesians. I think, right? Yeah. Four thirty. Okay. He said it reminds me of a story. A little boy goes to his father and says, Dad, how tall is Jesus? What does it matter? But I don't know. Maybe six foot, I guess. The boy says, If Jesus lives in me, and he's that tall. A lot is going to stick out. Jesus living in us should show on the outside. I love that. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. I so love that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's super cute. And that's so true though. That's so true. You know, Christ should be so filled up in us that it shows on the outside. It should overflow. We should overflow with displaying Christ outwardly, not just inwardly. Right? Absolutely. Okay, and then these verses. Okay, so the first two are referencing Old Testament, um, like how the Holy Spirit... Um, helped people in the Old Testament times, and here's a couple of verses it references. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. Okay, and that was Numbers 11:26, and then Ezekiel 2, 2 says, And as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. So in Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit just came at particular moments, basically, like moments of need. And then now, ever since the time of Jesus, when you accept Jesus, it says, The Holy Spirit indwells all believers from the moment they trust completely in the Lord and his saving power. When an individual accepts Jesus as Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell, never to leave. And then it references Ephesians 4.30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I love that. The Holy Spirit is the believer's greatest asset and is essential for survival in this sinful world. Dang, that's a powerful way to, to state that. Is an essential asset for survival in this sinful world. Hey, Pastor Deustin, welcome, welcome. We are talking about obedience today. <laughs> we're in John chapter 14. You just spent a lot of time in John, I think, didn't you? And we're talking about the Holy Spirit. So we just kind of walked through in chapter 14. It kind of breaks, Jesus kind of breaks down the Trinity a bit, right? So we're kind of breaking that down. And now we're talking about, okay, this is how you receive the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the Holy Spirit? So we just we just read the Holy Spirit indwells all believers from the moment they trust completely in the Lord and his saving power. When an individual accepts Jesus as Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell never to leave. 
And then it says, the Holy Spirit is the believer's greatest asset and is essential for survival in the sinful world. Dang, man. The Holy Spirit is the believer's advocate. Um, in other words, the Holy Spirit is comforter and teacher. And we see John did a verse by verse study. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I was pretty sure it was John. Let's see. This one is referencing John 16, 7, and John 16, 13. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I also love, I never really thought about, like, I feel like it's, it's, when, when you hear people talk about the Holy Spirit, you do hear it a lot. It, it, it. But man, that's, that's such a powerful point to me to point out. That if the Holy Spirit is is God's spirit and is is God, right? Like part of the Trinity, it's He. I don't know why that just like, the but that just like majorly stuck out for me just now that the Holy Spirit is also He. It's not it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. <laughs> it is it is He. I, wow, I don't know why that just like really hit me hard this morning. Um. But hey, that's yes, exactly, exactly. It, 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 the Holy Spirit. See, I almost just caught myself doing it. The Holy Spirit is a He. It is absolutely the person of the Holy Spirit. Man, I need to watch myself because I don't, I don't know that I even realized that I was doing that. Like it's one of those things. I feel like we know that, but man, that's so easy to. <laughs> it's so easy to. To do that oh my gosh god knew i needed to read that this morning you want to really scare people refer to him as the holy ghost yeah <laughs> no joke oh my gosh um and by the way if you i don't think i said which study bible i'm reading out of this morning i'm reading out of my women's study bible um but me the notes here are just so powerful this has become my uh my go-to uh, study Bible and I'm actually oh my gosh guys I'm so excited I'm working on getting my next one that um, I feel is really I, I feel this next one is really going to improve there's actually two that I really really want and I feel like they're really going to help improve our studies um, I'm a physical Bible kind of girl like I have a really hard time with with doing the digital stuff um, with Bible study like I want to like really like have my hands on it and like be able to like highlight and notes and like I want physical and, and I'm working on getting a couple, a couple more, um, to really enhance our studies. I'm so excited, but this one is so powerful and I love it. So let's keep reading our, uh, our note here. Um, <laughs> oh man, I need to highlight this. I love that the Holy Spirit is the believer's greatest asset and is essential for survival in this sinful world. Oh, I love that. Okay. And then it says, the Holy Spirit gives the believer help and advice for living the Christian life. As moment by moment, believers surrender their lives to God and allow themselves to be used for God's service. The filling of the Holy Spirit occurs. Through the filling of the Holy Spirit, believers are controlled by the Spirit and equipped for service. <laughs> oh my gosh, excuse me. I feel like one of the, one of the toughest... Um, Man, I feel like really one of the toughest things for for us, for humans, for people, as we as we really as we try to figure out like how the heck am I supposed to like surrender? Like what what does that even mean to surrender myself to God? Like why would I want to do that? Right? And like when we go on that journey, we start to ask those questions. Like if you think back, right, to like what was going on. When you first started your faith journey, no matter how old you were, I feel like everybody kind of goes through that phase of like really kind of trying to figure it out, right? And goodness, 
I I feel like this note is just so on point. Um, where it's saying is moment by moment, believers surrender their lives. Like it is not a one and done. Like it's a constant process of just constantly surrendering a little bit more of yourself. I used to describe it as this, and I say used to because like I'm at, I feel like I'm at a point where I don't I don't I don't feel like I need to do this this thing anymore that I'm about to describe. Okay. Um, as I was kind of starting out in my faith journey, I had a lot of pain and a lot of just struggle and, and things that I was really, I was trying to lift up and I didn't know how, and I didn't, I didn't, I was still very new in my faith. I was still trying to figure it out. And for a long time, right. I was just, and, and so what I would do is I started just like really like when I would just like consciously like intentionally spend time with God and just be trying to just surrender more of myself. Um, I would just imagine like I would be praying over whatever it was that I would be trying to lift up to him. And I would just imagine this like this like stream coming off of me and me just like lifting the stream up to God. I'm sorry, messing with my camera, just stream up to God. And just handing it to him and just the stream just like flowing. Like it wasn't just like a a ball or, you know, like a box or whatever. It was like the stream and I would just like, it was just constantly flowing out. And I was just constantly just trying to lift and just give God just more and more. And then sometimes it was just kind of felt like, uh, you know, like you just kind of pull back. You're like, I just, I don't know if I can. And then you do again. And, And it's like the more that you just kind of feed that up to God, it's like, I feel like, I've, I've fed so much of that hurt and so much of my brokenness and so much of my past and my mistakes and all the hurt that I've suffered and just everything. I've just lifted so much up to him that like, it's not a constant stream anymore. Now it's, now it's when I, when I, like when I'm seeking God out in prayer or whatever, now I'm like, okay, like here again, like I recognize I have more to lift up, but at first it's this constant constant stream as you're as you're just trying to navigate this surrender and it's just it's a it's oh my gosh it's it like feels like it's never ending and it really isn't right and and i don't know if that really made sense and that's kind of a weird <laughs> description but we need to constantly be surrendering to God. And as we learn and as we grow and as we get closer to him and we learn more about him and his commands and being obedient and we just grow our obedient heart, um, it, it gets easier to lift those things to him and it doesn't feel like it's just yanking and pulling anymore, right? But for a while it does. For a while it does. And Pastor Jedi, welcome back, friend. I see you. I see you. Um, truth. I began referring to the Holy, the Holy Spirit as the, the Holy Spirit. Just like I'd say Jesus is with me. The uh, Holy Spirit is with me. Ah, I see. I see. It's small but powerful when it gets in you who he really is. Ah. Thank you so much for that follow, Pan Fried Ginger. I love that name. That's so cute. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Goodness. And Pastor Jedi, yeah, man, that's a really good. That's man. I gotta, I gotta remember that. Just cut out the, right? Because it's it's the person of Holy Spirit, right? He. He is Holy Spirit. <laughs> that sounds so weird, but you no, know, I get what you're saying though. That's that's a really yeah. I I got to It's like I know it's it, man, I feel like there's there's things that we know as Christians. Like we know <clears throat> um that it's it, it's a trinity, right? We know that three are one. But when we speak it and when we acknowledge it in our mind that way, I think it reaffirms it for us. And as we talk about it, I feel like it makes more sense to others who are maybe just exploring that, just learning that, just navigating that. And they don't, they don't understand that yet. Right. So 
the way, man, I heard, something just rang into my head. <laughs> something just rang into my head on that note. And I had this wonderful conversation with one of our members the other day. And we were having this great conversation about so many different things. But one, one of the things that he said just really stuck with me. And he said, the way that you say things matters. And it's like another thing. We know that, right? But having that stuck in your head and remembering that the, that the way that we say things really does matter. We have to be, especially like, you know, I, I don't know how many of you guys here, um, I know Pastor Deuce and obviously you do, you know, Bible studies and, and you talk about God and you, you know, and you're a pastor and, you know, and so you, you have maybe a bit more awareness, but we, we know and we need to remember that how we say things really does matter and the way that we explain things matters not just to those that are hearing it but to ourselves so thank you for um all of you for explaining this and and, and adding to that um because i'm sure i'm not the only one that needed that reminder and needed to hear it that way too but that's that is awesome <laughs> yeah it's you know man it, it it really does you know there's certain things that I've caught myself saying that I'm like okay to me I know what it means to me it makes sense like I know the background information of why I say these things right and and we can easily get caught up in that and then when somebody's like you know man I have found there's there was a couple of things um that I realize I say and I know what they mean, but I don't always do a great job explaining what it means. And so it can be received not how it's meant, right? And 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 we also have to recognize that not everybody's going to go in and do the research. Not everybody's gonna go in and, and do a study on that themselves. Not everybody's gonna take what you say and go study further. They're gonna take what you say and they're going to just take what you say, right? And so I found that there's some correcting that I've had to do and I've had to have conversations with people. Hey, I said, I say this and, and I really feel like I need to explain what that actually means because I feel like you've taken it not how I meant it and so you're not taking it the way that it needs to be taken, right? And, and man, we don't want to get caught up in that. But again, though, that's another reminder to lean on the Holy Spirit because he is the spirit of truth, right? He is the spirit of truth and we need to lean into the spirit and let the spirit speak through. Let, let, let Holy Spirit speak through. See you there. I got to, I got to practice that. Let Holy Spirit speak through us and speak his truth through us, right? And not get, and <laughs> not get caught up in the flurry not get caught up in oh my gosh there's silence i need to say something right like it's easy to do it's easy to do anyway um i was just teaching about this last sunday i told everyone one thing i feel we need to stop doing as christians is stop the i am but a sinner talk i am no longer part of the world i am a blood-bought saint of christ and i need to proclaim that instead of the failures of the flesh yes you know what and i'll be honest here's one thing that i say a lot here's one thing that i say a lot and i'm really very consciously trying to stop saying it because of that exact thing that you just said as i say we're all broken we <laughs> i say we're all broken and now i'm like oh man like i feel like n with the conversation that that this i so appreciate when people step up and they say hey i don't think that's coming out the way that you think it is you know what i mean like we need those people to step up and be like mm, that doesn't sound the way you think it does we need to remember that okay we absolutely we're in a broken fallen world we we well the way that he explained it is we were broken but Christ makes us whole. So we are made new, made whole, made beautiful with Christ. So we were all broken. 
But now with Christ, we are made whole. We are made new. And I was like, dang. I needed that reminder because that's a mindset thing. You know what I mean? And absolutely chill, Will. You just hit the nail on the head on that one. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning. Pastor Jedi, yeah, I think, you know, I think that that's something that it, it's, it's, I think we all need to work on that. <laughs> we all need to work on that. Oh, man, mine too this morning. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to stream this morning because um, I was doing my yoga this morning and I watched like YouTube videos. I do yoga with Adrian. if you ever want to check it out. She's wonderful. I love her. Um, and it like, it died. I didn't even get to do it. But by, by the time I was, you know, showered and all that good stuff, it was, it was back on. So we we're good. But man, get away from your internet, Satan. Not today, you Satan. <laughs> oh man. So, um, good morning, Johnny. We are talking about, um, obedience and the Holy Spirit. And, um, see, I did it again. So, oh my gosh, I need to. But now you've got me recognizing it. I appreciate that. So we're talking about Holy Spirit is the person of the Holy Spirit. is part of the Trinity that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Three in one. And Holy Spirit um, is not an it. Holy Spirit is a he as the body of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit, I should say person there we go words person of the holy spirit okay body spirit yeah you know what i meant i think <laughs> oh goodness yes yeah, so who is the holy spirit who is holy spirit oh my gosh i need to like see that's another thing they they brought up johnny holy spirit should be like a name should be the name not the title man that's that like I don't man that really hits me today I don't know who else needed to hear that today but man I sure did I sure did so I appreciate that so much okay so let's reiterate one more time here and then we're gonna move on finish up chapter 14 here um okay in fact, I'm going to highlight this really fast before I, because I love this. I love this. Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. <laughs> oh my gosh, excuse me. And thus should be referenced as he, not it. Love that. Um, okay. And then, so, again, the Holy Spirit indwells all believers from the moment they trust completely in the Lord and his saving power. When an individual accepts Jesus as Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell, never to leave. The Holy Spirit is the believer's greatest asset and is essential for survival in this sinful world. Love that. Okay, we're going to jump forward here in chapter 14. Okay, we're going to pick up at, oh, here. Pick up at, oh, sorry. Pick up at verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present. Oh, my gosh. Alarms. Oh, that scared me. Oh, guys. It's 9, 11 in the morning. Okay, several of you are not aware. Oh, man. Hold on one second. I had, like, an urgent thing happen over the weekend with one of my members. And I was really worried about her. And she finally got back to me. Let me just make sure that, that she's okay. Because that's important. What? Oh.
Okay, guys. Man. I think my heart just broke a little bit. She's o She's okay. Perfect time to have read that. Guys, okay, so let me explain really quick uh, what 9, 11, 9, 1, 1. Okay, so if you have not been here for this, um, my pastor, my church, um, gave us kind of a, a mission. And I've been, I've been sharing this every day, and I would love to share this with you guys too, okay? So what do we do when there's an emergency? We call 911. Our world is in a state of emergency right now. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to call on God for his divine intervention. So at 911, 911, every morning we stop, we take a pause, and we pray. Okay, so um, if you guys would like to join me in prayer over our world and our everything that's going on uh, with this crazy state of emergency in our culture and our nations and beyond. Um, I would love for you guys to stop and pray with me. And um, I also just read, I haven't read the entire thing, but I read enough to know that a situation that happened over the weekend, um, we had somebody leave abruptly and I didn't know why. And I was really, really worried about her. And I just finally heard from her why she left, and I'm not going to lie, it kind of broke my heart a bit. And she came back, but without giving too much detail, I, I would really love for you guys to just be praying over this individual, just kind of a silent, unspoken um, prayer, and just fill her up. Um, pray for her to just be filled up, okay? Because um, she needs it. So... <sighs> I will be honest, that was one that, that, that got my emotions and not there. Um, man, I, I just, I just, I love you guys and I'm glad you're here and I care about all of you and let's go ahead and stop and pray. If you'll pray with me, dear Lord, God. Help us all to surrender to you more every day. Help us, God, to open our eyes and our ears and our minds and our hearts to you more every day. Help us to lift ourselves up to you. Give you our burdens, our sins, our mistakes, our hurts our joys, our praises, our needs. God, help us to lift it all up to you. We are in such a broken state right now in our world. And it's so easy to feel swallowed up and spit out by this crazy, crazy time that is happening right now. And God, I just, I just... I just ask you to be with us, all of us. Help us, fill us up with your spirit. Help us to, to be corrected. Correct us where we need to be more obedient to you. And help us to surrender more to you every single day so that we can be filled up even more with your spirit and, and just overflow with you. So that when we spend time in your word as you call us to do, that we see it reflected back at us. That we that we read it and we are and we are living it. We are doing it. We are breathing it. We are displaying it far and wide in all that we do. And God, help us, help us to just seek you harder and seek to display you better. Help us to proclaim your love and your truth further. God, change us, work in us, soften our hearts, open our minds, and help us to do what you know we need to do. 
God, help us to hear from you and help us to focus on your voice and not the the dark, evil, corrupt voices so suffocating around us. It's so hard to tune those out sometimes. And God, I, I just plead with you that you help us to just see you, hear you, focus on you and you alone and whatever it is that you call each of us to do. God, help our hearts to be fixed on you. Help us to help us to desire obedience to you. Help us to love better, love deeper, and love the way that you call us to. And love the people that you call us to. Help us to build relationships that are that are honoring you. Help us to strive to be worthy. We can never we can never really be worthy, but help us to have a heart to try. Have a heart for you. Help us to love you better for everything you've done and continue to do for us. And God, I just pray that you just continue, please, God, to work in us and change us. Heal our world and set us on the right path. I almost want to say back on the right path, but God, I I don't know. I just know that we need to be on a better path than we're on right now because our world is falling apart. And we all need you even more, even deeper, even harder. God, and help us. Help us to be made a whole in you. God, thank you so much for everything you do for us. Everything you bless us with. All the promises you give. All the love that you fill us with. Thank you for your instructions. Thank you for your commands. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son. And for your spirit. Thank you for you. Thank you so much God. For everything that we have. That we lose. That we hope for. And that we gain. God, just thank you so much for all of it. And whatever is ahead, I don't know what's ahead, but you do, and that's enough for me. And help that to continue to be enough for all of us. Let our hope in you and your promises be enough. God, just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. In the name of your Son, Amen. Wow. There's a reason I don't typically read things coming at me while I'm streaming. And I'm just like so... Sorry. Got to re refocus myself here. Good morning, Misfit. Good morning, good morning. Um... Misfit, I think you will appreciate our topic today. <laughs> we are talking about obedience, and we are talking about the holy. We are talking about Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, I caught myself. Caught myself. Okay, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about the holy about Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it right one of these days. I'm gonna get it right. Okay. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will reach you, or sorry, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And again, we need to be in the Word. We need to be in the Word so that we can be absorbing it and there's even more for, I keep wanting to say the, for Holy Spirit to, to remind us of, right? Learn so that you can grow and you can be reminded. How can you be reminded of something that you don't know? And how are you going to know if you don't learn? How are you going to learn 
if you don't spend time in the Word, right? So spend time in the Word so that there is even more that you're learning and even more that you can be reminded of, right? Trust me, he'll guide you there. He'll guide you there if you need it, when you need it. I shouldn't say if you need it, when you need it, because we all need it. We all need it. This is one of my favorite verses. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. One of my absolute favorite verses. I think this is the only verse that I ever learned like truly um, in the church that I grew up in it really just felt like a dead church for me and it just it, it did not I, I didn't feel God speaking to me in that church um, that was a point in my life that I was still, it was very dark. It was still very, like, my life was just awful in a lot of ways growing up. And I didn't feel, you know, let me correct that. Let me correct that. In the sermons and in, in all the services, even in the youth group, like, I knew my youth leader was absolutely, like, filled with the Spirit, filled with God's Spirit. And... I felt bad, but it's funny, I, you know, talking about, man, that was just super weird. So with this verse, it says, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I said to you. And I was just, I was just about to tell a story about this next verse. And, and, and honest to goodness, I swear, I just, I was just reminded of why this verse is so powerful for me. Okay, so, I grew up in a Methodist church. I'm not part of the Methodist church anymore, but I grew up in the Methodist church. And in this church, it was a very big, beautiful building. Very old. And in this building... Um, in this church building, we had, so we had the main chapel that was absolutely stunningly gorgeous, you know, all the stained glass windows and everything, and, but when you come into the church through the main doors, you've got, you know, like the lobby or whatever you call it, and then you've got, you know, the room with all the robes and stuff, and then off to the left, you've got the youth center, you've got downstairs, um, you got, like, the little kids rooms and stuff and you've got a big old like huge room in the basement where they have all the potlucks and whatever but there was this one little room just one little room when you go off to the left first door on the left when you go to the left you go through this set of doors and there was this little chapel it was like a little mini chapel And, see, I was the kid in the youth group that, I see, I was the little sister. So if that tells you anything, <laughs> I was not liked. I was the annoying little sister. I was picked on. I was bullied. Um, the older kids did not like me. And I was too old to hang out with the younger kids. So, <laughs> misfit. So I used to just kind of escape 
to them because I didn't want to deal with getting picked on. Um, and so I used to escape the youth room and I would go to this little chapel. And I remember when I was, so we would, when we would do communion as a church, all the, all the kids would come into the service and we would get in this big, huge circle. And it was always like this weird thing. It was weird to me. Like I didn't really understand it. And we would get in this big, huge circle and we would all hold hands and then we would pass the trays around and we would all do communion. And, um, and we would, we would say this verse. And at that time, time I didn't understand but but I God put it on my heart and it was like engraved in me peace I leave with you my peace I give to you and and that one bit right there just stuck with me out of my entire time growing up in that church that is what stuck with me and I grasp onto that and that verse is actually what sparked my questions and sparked my my investigation of of who God is and I used to spend time I would escape you know we would go off to our youth rooms and and whatever and I would go to this little mini chapel that nobody really ever went into so I would just be able to sit there by myself and I would meditate on that. And this was long before I knew about being in a relationship with God or, you know, I didn't know anything at that point, truthfully. Like, I really didn't. But I, but I heard that and my life was such turmoil growing up. And I just remember hearing that over and over and over. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And I was like, what the heck? What is that even talking about? Peace? How could I have peace? But when I would sit in that chapel and think about that, that was where I could find peace. And I didn't understand what it meant. And it wasn't until many, many, many years later that I would finally understood, understand what that meant. But I tell you what, that... Oh, that hits my heart today. <laughs> Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, we cannot obtain peace on our own. The, the way that our world sees peace is not the same as the peace of God. Again, not as the world gives, do I give to you. God gives us peace for our soul. Rest for our soul. God quiets the storms. His spirit rests in us and brings us rest brings us peace and that was the very first thing that I noticed for me when I finally like it says here the moment that I trusted completely in the Lord and his saving power and accepted Jesus as Savior I felt his Holy Spirit come into me and give me peace like literally the moment so when it says from the moment like for me it was literally the moment that I trusted in Jesus as my savior and I trusted whatever that meant I didn't know what the, that meant at that time I had no idea I was I I for many years had been like banned from reading the bible from having a bible from praying from going to church I didn't know what that meant but God put this one verse on my heart for so many years that it grew and it grew. And eventually, I gave my life to him and his spirit 
filled me immediately and I felt peace for the very first time in my life. Man, it's hard reading that again. I don't know what it is today, but that just hit my heart so hard today. Oh, <sighs> I would love, you know what I would really love? I would love to hear if there are verses for you guys that that speak to you in that way that that maybe were carried on your heart for a long time maybe a verse that that sparked questions a verse that that sparked you on your journey or that that maybe just ignited that flame a little bit a little bit brighter what are some powerful verses for you that keep that flame going or started that flame I would love to hear what your verses are. And, and it's interesting that for the last several years, I think I've forgotten how important that verse is for me and why. And, and as we're talking about how the Holy Spirit reminds us of all things, man, he just put right on my heart how important it is to lean on his spirit to lean on him to to trust his peace and it's like i know that and i do that every day but but remembering the value of that remembering the reason remembering what it was like before we had that peace do you remember what it was like before you knew the peace of God's spirit that's enough to remind me why I give my life to Christ man that's a humbling reminder why I give my life to Christ every day because I don't want to live the way that I did before I received his spirit before I accepted Christ dang Luke 13 22 through 30 help me out a post of the whole thing that's funny <clears throat> let's see and actually, here, let me read the whole thing here because I cut it off. I'm right next to it. 13, 13. <laughs> 22. Okay. <clears throat> oh my gosh, excuse me. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. <laughs> oh my gosh, so sorry. Hiccup attack, man. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are, la the, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last on that very day. Some Pharisees came, saying to him, "Get out and depart from here! You Herod wants to, for Herod wants to kill kill you." And he said to them, "Go, tell that fox. Behold, 
I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. Dang. Absolutely. Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Very sobering passage, indeed. The passage that really hits me is in Romans. Do you know where in Romans, Chill Will? Pastor Jedi shared Matthew 27:51. This one. Uh, this one rocks me. God reminded me of just what he had to do to get to, to you, oh, to get to us and for us to have him. The veil being torn in this verse is a picture for me of our door to his presence being taken, presence be taken away. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split. Hmm. Absolutely. Man, I, I love I love hearing what verses really speak to people. Oh, perfect. There we go, chill, Will. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord let me tell you what man that just hit me I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is today oh my gosh the feels for me like <laughs> let me just tell you how freaking true that is okay I grew up not ever actually really having real I never had somebody to really teach me about God. I had never, I had nobody to ever really teach me about Jesus, about his spirit, about, about any of this. Okay. And then at certain points in my journey, I had little nuggets, little nuggets, but I had many years where I, like I said earlier, I was like straight up banned from going to church, from praying, at least that he was aware of, from talking about God, from seeking out God. But you know what? That didn't stop God. Oh, thank you so much for that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Thank you so, so much for that. Oh my gosh. So much love. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Lost my train of thought. <laughs> I, I just, I... I didn't, I, I was flat out, like, banned from seeking God out, but that didn't stop God from seeking me out. And in those years that I was just blocked out in my physical life from God, um, that is absolutely where I heard and felt him just overwhelming me. And I, I didn't, I didn't understand but God knew I didn't understand and he knew what I needed and he knew that I needed him and he knew what it would take for me to reach him for me to trust him and it hit that point and it hit that day and it hit that moment and I I surrendered I began my journey of surrendering to him and oh my goodness I thank God every day for, for pulling me in, for not giving up on me. And exactly what that says, man, <laughs> nothing nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. People will try to put roadblocks. People will try to detour you. People will try to get you to, to reject God. People will try to convince you that God is not real. Or that God is not what we know he is. 
People will try to change your mind. People will try to change your beliefs. People will try to rip you away from God. And in a lot of times, they won't realize that they're doing it. A lot of times, they will. But you know what? Nothing created. It says, Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing can separate us from the love of God. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Philippians 1.6 uh, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Oh, yes. And you, let me tell you, he started working in you long before you came onto this earth. And he's going to keep working on you. He created you inside and out. He will keep working on you. Oh, man, so good. Psalm 19, 1 through 4. Yes. Oh, my gosh. We went through this in our sermon yesterday. So good. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to flip to that one here cuz I had notes. Child. My child is speaking to me. What child? Um, I'm I'm not done though. <laughs> She's, if you're done with your Bibles, I'm not done though. <laughs> you're fine. Go play. Okay, well then, you know what to do. <laughs> Mom life! Oh my gosh. Okay, we're totally going to reach, we're going to jump in here. Oh man. Psalm 19, absolutely. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them, he has set a tabernacle for the sun. I'm just going to keep going. Which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its grace. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect. Oh my gosh. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testament, testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, <laughs> rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me, then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. That is actually what our um, sermon was on yesterday. And here's some, some notes here scattered all around. Um... So our, our focus on this was how to regain your craving for God's word and for God's word. And man, that's so relevant for our, our conversation today as we're talking about obedience and we're talking about, you know, God, if, if we love God, we'll keep his commandments and we'll keep his word. And, and if we have lost that craving for his word, how do we regain that? And it was kind of a, a six-step process, right? And then, and then I've got some some things here. And it said, he said, so first is remove the appetite killers. So whatever is killing your appetite for God's word, get rid of those, right? And some examples are found in First Peter two one. If somebody wants to put that up in the chat, we can look at that. First Peter two verse one. 
And that's malice, deceit, envy, slander, hypocrisy, jealousy. Those are examples of, of appetite killers, right? Return to the word. Return to the word. Thank you. And then um, reference there is 2 Peter 1, verses 2 and 3, if you want to put that up. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Um, and then use a primary Bible that you call your own. Man, I feel that one. This one is my day-to-day. -day. Like, this is my primary Bible. And, oh my goodness, since having, since, like, really having a primary Bible that I really feel just so attached to, that makes so much difference for me in my study. Oh my gosh. Apply what you learn immediately. Apply what you learn immediately. And he said, he explained that. I love the way that he explained it. The word is not a textbook. The word is not a textbook. Okay? A textbook, you just study it and pass the test and forget it. Right? You don't, it's not a life application. The word is life. It is truth. It should breathe life into you and in, be an instruction manual for your life. It is It is the living, breathing word of God in your life. It is not a textbook. I loved that. Pray as you read and meditate and study the word. Don't just read it. Meditate over it. Pray over it as you're studying it and actually study it. Like, strive to understand it. And nourish yourself on a consistent basis. Be constantly in the word. Constantly in the word. And I love this. It says, the law of the Lord revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord makes wise the simple. Commandments of the Lord provide clarity. Fear of the Lord endures forever. Statutes of the Lord are righteous altogether. When we are unsure, seek the word of God for clarity. And lastly, a healthy Christian delights in the word of God. A healthy Christian delights in the word of God. Oh, so good. So good. Thank you for sharing that, Pastor Jedi great opportunity to go through that um i love revelation 22 21 because we must remember that the bible doesn't end with oh me it ends with amen oh i love that oh man i so love that the grace of the lord jesus be with all amen yes oh, i love that we must remember that the Bible doesn't end with, oh, me. It ends with, amen. Because it ain't about me. It's about him. Amen. <laughs> and all the people said, amen. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, and then, therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. Those are appetite killers. So if we find ourselves lacking an appetite for God's word, check yourself. Check yourself and see if you've got some appetite killers going on in your heart. What else? Anybody else have a verse to share? So so the pro the question was, for those who have showed up as we're sharing all these lovely verses, is what, what verses for you really speak to you or spoke to you? I keep whacking my mic. I'm so sorry. Um, kind of ignited that flame for Christ, ignited that flame for, for just coming to him. Um, what verse made you start asking questions, made you start kind of wondering, Hey, wh who, who's God? Like, why would I want to, why would I want to believe in God? Like, what's that all about? What verse maybe made you start asking questions? Right. I would love to hear what everybody else um, uh, is. What is on everybody else's heart? If you would like to share, and also if there's anything else, um, man, I'm 
so excited about this topic this week. I think it's really going to be one of those ones that <sighs> obedience is not an easy topic. Like that's just not something that people, you know, it's not in our human nature to to want to be obedient, right? But we were talking about in the beginning how we need to be obedient to God like children to parents, right? Those of you who are here and are parents, um, you definitely will will relate to the analogy of, you know, when when your kids are behaving, when they are being obedient, they're following the rules, they're doing what you tell them to do, then you get to reward them, right? You get to reward them. You get to love on them and bless them and praise them and, you know, and when they defy you, when they're disrespectful, when they disobey, when they break the rules, there are consequences, right? There are consequences for that. And they get disciplined. Or maybe they get grounded. They lose privileges, right? The same is true for us. The same is true for us. God is our Father, our Heavenly Father, and we are His children. And when we disobey Him... He will discipline us and we and we get things, you know, maybe we get things taken away. Maybe we lose privileges or, or opportunities. Maybe we, we, you know, we get grounded for a bit, right? And, and we have to wait for those blessings, right? And we need, when if we truly love God, we will obey his commands. And we will obey his word. We will spend time in his word. If we love him, we will live like we love him. And he tells us very simply how to do that. <clears throat> the Bible convicts people of their lifestyle, which I feel like most people don't like. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love how, um, I think it was Chill Will put it, and, and it reminded me of something that I heard in the sermon yesterday as well. Um, he, he put it as, you know, reading the word, it should feel like a mirror. When you're reading the word, you should, fe you should feel like you're kind of looking at a mirror as you know, you're reading how you should live and you should be living that way. Like, and if you're not living that way, if you don't feel like you're, you're, you've got a mirror in your face, then there's something's got to change there. Right. And the way that, um, it's, it's so funny that so many things are coming up that are relevant to the sermon that happened, man, I clearly needed these reminders. Um, I'm not reading the word, the word is reading me. And if, if, it's, I feel like that's true in so many areas. It's like, you know, where it talks about, you know, we are we are broken sinners and we need Jesus, right? Um, in all these ways that we mess up, that absolutely is a mirror, right? But then as we accept Christ and and we recognize our need for Him, and we and we we choose to we love Him and we give our life to Him. We accept him as our savior. We come into relationship with him and with God and receive God's spirit. <laughs> Excuse me. Then we begin to change. We begin to be transformed. We are then made new and we have the spirit guiding us. We have his spirit. We have Holy Spirit guiding us so that we learn how to live better. And, and better according to God's commands, according to God's word. And when we read the word, we then see the mirror of this is how we're called to live. And and we're doing it, right? Oh, man, you're going to... Rude. Hey, just remember. Just remember. <laughs> I can do this back to you, <laughs> misfit. <laughs> Redeeming all those hydrates. No, I probably need it. You're my scratchy voice. Oh my gosh. I started using my giant cup full of ice. It's so hot and I, I, I'm i I'm okay this morning, but whew, it's going to be like 90 degrees. We don't get like 90 degree weather here very often. <laughs> I'm like dying when it's that hot. Steps check in. Oh boy. Well, I failed today. Let's see how many I've managed to get. I've managed to get a whole 17 steps. A whole 17 steps. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I just probably cackled in your ears so loud. Oh boy. No, thank you for that. So, 
goodness, man. And I, I tell you, if you need a heart check or if you feel like maybe, maybe, I, maybe I need a heart check. I don't know. Spend some time in Psalms, pretty much anywhere in Psalms. I feel like anytime, anywhere in the word, but like Psalms is like, oh man, it's just beautiful. Absolutely. How about you, Miss Fit? You want to share a verse? You want to share a verse before you leave? Hey, hey, share a verse before you leave. What verse has been, like, really powerful for you lately? Tell me before you go. I like how you always type in, like, all caps. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, he might be gone already. A lot of people use John for description of salvation, but I've always preferred Ephesians because it is so moving. Yeah, I love Ephesians. I just love scripture. Like, I like I feel like so often I'm like, man, that's one of my favorite verses, and that's one of my favorite verses, and that's one of my favorite verses, and that's, you know, and I'm like, oh, I just love. And I feel like that's just, that's, man, it's like when we're going through this these passages that we were going through, like in John 14, it's so accurate where it says, like, if you love God, you will obey him because because you love him. And I'm like, right on, because I love God and like I have a heart so filled up with God and I love his word and I love that he provided his word. And I love that he tells me how to be and how to live and how to survive this freaking dark, crazy, broken world. Right. I love this and I don't necessarily like all of it, but I sure love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a difference. There's a difference. Ephesians uh, 2 describes the grace of God. And I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Guys, I'm just, it's funny. I feel like I woke up this morning. You ever just have a morning where you just, you wake up and you're like, Ugh. Like, man, I'm just, uh, you know, like, I just, I'm just tired. I'm just, I don't want to today, you know? And I'm like, I'm like in the mindset of like, I know it's going to be super hot and it's going to get crazy. And I'm like, you know what? Like, God, I love that God has set this up where we get to spend time in his word every morning together. And it is just such a beautiful thing. Um, I just, oh my gosh, like, I just can't even, I just can't even. I'm just so grateful for God moving me today and just working in my heart and, and, and recognizing and remembering that there's always work to be done. Like, God always has work to do in us, right? And we always have things to learn, and we always have areas that we can grow. And I think that it's really, really important that we remember that we never stop desiring to learn and grow more. Um, Michelle will not have to go read it. Do it. Do it. I have been listening to scripture videos on YouTube. Channel is Peaceful Scriptures. The last video that punched me was Psalms 90 through 95. Okay, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to like gaze at those for a second here. Oh, no. Folded a page. Sorry. Dun, 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 dun. 90, huh? Oh, hot dang. All right. Book four of Psalms. Let's see. Oh, the God of the eternity of God and man's frailty. Safety of abiding in the presence of God. Ooh. Praise the Lord for his love and faithfulness. Ooh, that sounds on point. Oh, man. Oh, man. I think I need to hit up some of that. The eternal reign of the Lord. God, the refuge of the righteous. And a call to worship and obedience. Oh, dang. That is on point. Oh, man. I think we need to spend some time there this week. I'm going to I'm gonna bookmark those. And we're going to we're gonna hit those up. So we want 
we're going to do, I need a darker pen on this bright little sticky note. <laughs> Psalm. So we want 91 and 95. We need to go through those this week. For show. Sure. Gonna happen. I'm gonna, I wrote this little sticky note. There we go. Okay. Man. I wonder, okay, let's check this out real quick. I'm gonna check my schedule. I wonder if I have any of those. I don't. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Guys, we're gonna be spending some time in Acts, Jeremiah, Exodus, and Luke. Man, I didn't even actually plan any songs, so that is beautiful. Beautiful. We are so going to jump into these. I just want to give them plenty of time. And today, I don't normally, like, worry if I go over, but oh my gosh, Mondays. Mondays are, like, the one day that I can't really go over. Um, So, man, this has been super wonderful, and I love you guys. And thank you so much for that sub, for real. Thank you so much. Um, and for everybody who's been here hanging out, I love you guys. This has been such a wonderful start to this topic. Um, so we're going to continue talking about faithful obedience all week long. Okay, so for those of you who have come in and you're new, um, we do um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 7 to 10. I mean 7, sorry, 8 to 10. Um, used to be seven. We bumped it. So eight to 10 Pacific time, sometimes longer. Um, and then Wednesdays we do a voice channel study. Okay. So, um, Wednesday is not on the stream, but feel free to join us in the discord and you can join us in the voice channel Bible study, a little more private setting. Everybody kind of jumps in and conversates a bit super fun. Um, also, you're more than welcome any day to join me in the voice channel. You just got to let me know that you want to join the voice channel. Um, and you can join me like talking on the stream and stuff with us. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's been super fun. Okay. So you guys are awesome and I love you. And we are going to find somebody to raid real quick. And yes, I'm so glad. Pastor Houston, thanks so much for coming in. It's always good to see you here. I know you're a busy dude. <laughs> Um, and chill, Will. Thank you so much for being here. Kingdom Acadia. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Your raids have hooked me up with some really cool people lately. Good. Oh, Yoshi. Hello. No, we're not going to do ESO today. Okay. So, oh, oh, Yoshi. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. So here's the deal. Okay. I have some news for you. For those of you still hanging out. Okay. You guys still here with me? Here's the deal. You ready? So what we're going to do is our mornings are going to be strictly Bible study. I'm going to spice things up a little bit. We're going to do strict Bible study on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay? In the mornings. Like a solid two plus hours, usually, of Bible study. Okay? But then, I'm adding in specific game streams in the evenings. So later today, Yoshi, we're actually going to do Minecraft this evening and I will stream it so at five ish o'clock maybe four ish o'clock <laughs> more in there pacific time um expect to see us on for some minecraft in the realm if you play minecraft on bedrock and want to join us in the realm please let me know we'd love to do that so we'll be here for some minecraft um later today and then friday and Saturday, we will have ESO streams. I may have more evening ESO streams sporadically throughout the week, but not always scheduled, depending. It'll just depend on what's going on. But but that's, I felt like, you know what? That just felt, that just felt right. So we will have our morning Bible studies, and then I need a break to get things done during the day. And then we will have nighttime games, or like evening time games. Okay? Oh... Thank you so much for that, Yoshi. Oh, God, I love you guys. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for that. Oh, my goodness. I'm just... Ugh. Oh, my God. 
much. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, guys. You guys are such a blessing. That is amazing. That is seriously amazing. Thank you so much. For real. Oh, my heart is just so full today, guys. I just... Oh, I could get emotional when I'm not going to. Oh my god! Deustin! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This is the first time I've ever seen a hype train notification. Oh my lanta. What is happening? Thank you guys so much! Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry! <laughs> You guys are amazing. Seriously, thank you so, so much for that. What a blessing. I am, like, blown away right now. That is the most subs I've ever had. Like, no joke. Okay, y'all are saying choo-choo, so I'll tell you. It's actually 94% right now. Oh, my goodness! Oh, Johnny, thank you for that gifted sub! Oh, my God! Oh, what is happening, guys? We got level one of the hype train. That's the first time I've ever, ever even... Oh, my gosh. I can't even right now. You guys are amazing. I'm going to cry. <laughs> guys, oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for that. Seriously, thank you so much for that. What is happening? Oh, my gosh. Justin, thank you so much for those bits. Oh my goodness gracious, you guys. I don't even know what to do right now. I've never... Huh, I don't... I don't know what to do. See, I don't make a... I don't, I don't make a big deal out of, like, paid stuff. Like, like, truly, like... Thank you so much. You guys feel on your heart to do that and support me and, and what we do here. And oh my gosh, I just, I'm seriously going to cry. I'm not even kidding. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm serious. <laughs> oh, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> seriously, thank you so much for that. That is, like, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. <sighs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, pull myself together here. For real. Thank you for that. Like truly. I really appreciate that. I don't. I really don't. I don't make a. I, I make a. I try to make a big deal when you guys choose to do that. But man. I just. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Um, I love you guys so much. And I love what we do here. And I love that. I love that God has just opened this door for me and for all of us to just get together and just glorify him and learn about him and encourage each other and empower each other and just everything. It's just such a just such a beautiful thing. And that is just you guys are so encouraging. I can only I'm like I'm I'm like so blown away right now. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've I've never experienced a hype train before. Like, not even kidding. I, 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 I honestly didn't even know what a hype train was until, like, a few weeks ago. I'm not even kidding. Had no idea. Oh, my gosh. I appreciate all of you and all you guys do. And, oh, you know what? You know what? Here, I'm going to give a shout-out, okay? I want to give a shout-out. A couple here. One. Y'all, if you are not following Pastor Deustin, please... Go follow him. Anybody here who is not following Pastor Deuce, and I don't think my shout-out commands are working right now, but I need to fix that. But um, please feel free to post your channel, um, Deustin, and please, you guys, hit him up. Also, Kingdom Acadia is um, just going to be starting out streaming and everything here soon as well. Um, she is part of our community here and is amazing, and we love her. And um, I'm excited to see what she's going to be sewing as well. And please, go sh go drop her a follow. Sh throw your channel in there. I know you guys, you guys are so funny. I know nobody likes to actually share their channel in here. But I'm serious. Please do. <laughs> um, 